Hey, welcome to today's um, broadcast. Um, we're still going on talking about the wisdom of God. The first three episodes, we talked about the basis of what, the, what wisdom is, which is the application of knowledge. We talked about um, the different kinds of wisdom. And uh, yesterday, we actually talked about compared uh, godly wisdom with worldly wisdom, the different attributes, you know, of the two types of wisdom. And we also mentioned that, you know, this godly wisdom, which is of a higher nature, is available for us as human beings. God actually wants us to have that wisdom so that we can fulfill his purpose for our lives, for our generation. So, and he's willing to give it to us liberally. He will not upbraid, the Bible says, you know, um, as much of it as we want is available for us. So today we're going to look at how we can actually tap into that wisdom of God, okay, that's available unto us. Because it's one thing for somebody to offer you something, you've got to be able to receive it before you can actually benefit from it. So we're looking at how to tap into that wisdom, how to receive it. You know, and begin to walk in it and enjoy the benefits, you know, that that wisdom brings to our lives. Okay. Now, um, at the end of the broadcast yesterday, um, you remember we, we compared godly wisdom and human wisdom and worldly wisdom. And uh, there's this verse in the scriptures that actually stood out to me, which I didn't mention yesterday. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. And it's, it says that the foolishness of God, remember, foolishness is the opposite of wisdom, right? I've talked about how um, foolishness and wisdom both have markers that we can use to identify them. The principle of by their fruits, you will know them, right? Somebody who's operating in foolishness, you can know in the way they think, the way they talk and the way they act the same with a wise person so the bible is saying here that the foolishness of god is wiser than the wisdom of men so apart from the fact that you know in the qualities of those two you know which we referred to yesterday how that you know the um godly wisdom is of a higher standard it is humble it is considerate submissive it is pure, it is full of mercy and good fruit. It is peace loving, it is impartial, it is sincere. As against the worldly wisdom, okay, which is of is a lower form of it, which has attached to it bitterness, you know, resentment, it has envy, it has selfish ambition, you know, and um, it's a case of the end justifies the means, it doesn't matter who you crush on the way. It is boastful, it denies the truth, it's disorderly, there are evil practices associated with it, it is unspiritual and outright demonic. Okay, we read the scriptures yesterday, James 3, 13 to 17. So this other scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty five, actually mentions that the foolishness of God, that is if God were to have any trace of it, remember? We're looking at the wisdom of God, right? Well, the Bible says that here, even the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man, which means that the best that man has to offer is nothing compared even to the foolishness. If you can say, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable actually saying that God is, has any idea sort of foolishness, but this is scriptures, okay? So I'm going to treat it with that. This just compares the fact that godly wisdom is so much better than the earthly one okay right so today how do we tap into this godly wisdom so the first step really is to actually realize your need of this wisdom right hopefully the first three episodes that we've done this is the fourth episode the first three episodes that we've done would have stirred up a desire in our hearts, you know, to seek for more of this godly wisdom, right? Now, 
another thing that would help us really to you know seek for this wisdom is if we know the value of it if we know the benefits that can accrue unto us you know um via possessing and operating in this godly wisdom right now i've gone through the scriptures i mean i don't have time here to do a detailed study of the benefits but i'm just going to mention a few things you know ecclesiastes uh, proverbs and even job all over the scriptures there are many benefits that accrue to us from possessing this wisdom of god because when you know something is valuable then it is easy for you to be able to go for that thing whatever you don't know the value of it you don't want to waste your time on it if you're anybody like if you're anyone like anything like me. but when you know something is valuable then you are ready to expend your time or your resources to be able to acquire that thing remember the first episode we did we talked about how wisdom is the principal thing the bible says that in all you're getting get understanding so here i'm just going to run through a few of the benefits of the wisdom of god in ecclesiastes you know chapter 7 verse 19 talks about how the wisdom of god gives strength to the wise okay spiritual strength strength in your mind will and emotion physical strength it says in chapter 9 verse 18 that it is better than weapons of war i imagine <laughs> that the wisdom of god is better to possess it is better than possessing weapons of war ecclesiastes 10 10 it says that the wisdom of god brings us success you know we've mentioned that before you know i'm sure we agree that god is quite successful all you need to do is look at yourself then you will know that god is a success <laughs> because you are so intricate in the way he's created you that we need to desire that wisdom because it brings us success as well okay uh, chapter 7 verse 11 it says it gives us advantages over those who do not possess it okay you are at an advantage by possessing the wisdom of god you know the wisdom of God is the application of knowledge, all right? When God gives you gems and gives you insights, in fact, when you look at um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we're going to look at that later. It talks about a word of wisdom as one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So all, all you need is just a word of God's wisdom, <laughs> not a massive dose of it, that just a word, it puts you in the realm of the supernatural. It gives you such an advantage over those who don't have access to such high level of um, insight. Insight that you cannot gain by natural means, but is given to you by supernatural means. So this wisdom of God gives you an advantage. It talks about uh, in verse 12 that it preserves life. It preserves our lives. When you're wise, you know, in a godly way, you are able to make decisions that will preserve your life okay you know for instance if you choose to obey god you know and um, the bible says his commands are not grievous they are for our own benefit all right so if we choose to obey that automatically it orders our lives away from danger okay remember there's a series we did on psalm 91 where um when we obey god we show that we love him all right and when we love him, it says there that because he has set his love upon me, I will rescue him. I will deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. I will, I will lift him up. You know, all these things are cruel unto you, you know, when you possess this wisdom of God. Then in chapter 4, verse 13, it talks about it actually brings us promotion. You know, it brings us promotion. And if you go into Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 16, he says, this wisdom is more valuable than precious metals, than gold, than silver. You know, we all know gold is very valuable now, uh, with all the shaking going on in the nations. Then he says in chapter 3, verse 13, that the wisdom of God brings blessings into our lives. Okay, We are empowered to prosper when we possess this wisdom of God. All right in 24 verse 14 it says the wisdom of god 
guarantees our future and it gives us hope you know hope is futuristic so when we possess the wisdom of god it gives us hope you know and it guarantees our future and there's a passage in job chapter 28 it's actually the whole chapter is talking about the wisdom of god talking about how you can find this thing somewhere find another thing another place but where can you find wisdom you know and it, it actually talks about how nothing compares with it nothing compares with the wisdom of god okay absolutely nothing so when you know all the benefits of the wisdom of god of possessing this wisdom it helps us to be able to desire it you know when we press in for something when we seek remember the bible says when you seek you will find when you find something is valuable even more valuable than what people seek for these days which is gold and precious metals and things the wisdom of god is more valuable than that because when you possess the wisdom of god it gives you access to all those things plus more amen so once we know that and then we value it we begin to press in and hunger after it to desire it you know and then the next thing really which we mentioned yesterday is that we need to ask specifically ask god you know this is his wisdom right and we know he wants us to have wisdom he said he will give us liberally so when we read and verse 5 which we read uh, yesterday as well um it talks about how god really wants us to ask for more of his wisdom and he's actually pleased when we do he says he will give us his wisdom liberally when we want it whenever we ask god gives us his wisdom and he gives us liberally remember the case of solomon we mentioned that yesterday as well how that he asked for god's wisdom and god was so pleased that he gave him everything else in addition to that okay so we need to ask specifically number one we realize the value of it we desire it we hunger for it we press in for it okay then we ask specifically for that wisdom wisdom of god you know and god has promised that he will give it to us so we can have confidence okay to ask all right so look into the scriptures there is something that is guaranteed okay to give us access into that wisdom of god and that is called the fear of God, okay? The reverential fear of God is not um, a terror of God, no. It is a reverential fear, to reverence God, you know? That means that you you don't disrespect him, you honor him, you, I mean, you acknowledge God, you know? Um, so the, fi- the fear of God, the reverential fear of God automatically gives us access into the wisdom of god in fact in job 28 and verse 28 the last verse there it says wisdom is the fear of god the fear of god is wisdom when you fear god when you reverence him when you honor him then you are a wise person in fact if you look in proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 it says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom you've not even started to be wise at all until you have a reverence for god so if you are the kind of person that oh you don't really care about god or whatever whatever you know that kind of stuff then (laughs) you might even started being wise (laughs) that is a manifestation of foolishness remember we said yesterday that it's only a fool that says in his heart that there is no God. Okay. Even one that says there might be a God, but then disrespects that God, does not honor him, is still in the category of the fools, right? So the wisdom, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what it says in Psalm 9, verse, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Okay. And it goes on to say, uh, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we see, we said, uh, wisdom is the application of knowledge, right? You have knowledge, you gain understanding, and then you are able to apply that knowledge. So this is actually saying that the fear of the Lord 
is understanding. And it is the beginning of wisdom. And another verse in the scriptures about how the fear of the Lord is also the beginning of knowledge. So, I mean, looking at the whole thing, you know, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, without the fear of the Lord, you're not even, you've not even started. Okay? You've not even started at all. We are talking about the wisdom of God. Unless you have the fear of God, because that is the beginning of wisdom. That is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, and then if you look in Psalm 111 as well, in verse 10, it says the same thing. That is, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all who follow his precepts have good understanding. When we follow the precepts of the Lord, we have good understanding. That's what the Bible says. So the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of knowledge. It is, the, it, is the, it is understanding, it is wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is key to us tapping into this wisdom of God, this high level of wisdom that we call the wisdom of God. All right. So moving on from there, I'm just going to touch briefly about, you know, on the aspect of, you know, how Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Okay. Now we said this wisdom is the wisdom of God, right? It belongs to Him. Okay. Now, if we look at it, if we if we open it up a bit, unpack it a bit, a bit more, we find out that you know wisdom is actually a person. When we look into the scriptures, okay, we're going to do that a bit later, but just for now, we're talking about how to tap into the wisdom of God. One of the ways we actually begin to do that is when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Why? You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, it says here, First Corinthians 1.18, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Okay? You know, we said before, you know, which is verse 25 of the same chapter, um, it says, The foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So, the, the, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. You know, sometimes when you tell people about the fact of God's love, how that he has demonstrated that love by sending Jesus to die on the cross, you know, to pay the price for our sins so that we can receive his righteousness, so that we can be saved. You know, most people, it's, it sounds like rubbish to them. <laughs> it sounds like foolishness. They don't even want to hear it, you see. And this is what the Bible talks about, uh, talks about when it says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. So uh, uh, um, somebody that does not think that is anything to be reckoned with. The Bible says that the person is, is they see it as foolishness. And for as long as they see it that way, they cannot access it. They cannot enter into that place of godly wisdom. All right. Because um, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing until they turn back and begin to recognize and see and begin to value um, that message, you know, then they will begin to, um, they can now experience that wisdom of God. Also, if we look in um, verse 30 of the same chapter, it says, it is because of him that we are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. This is the message of the cross. That Jesus, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom of God given to us. So when we receive him, we are receiving the wisdom of God. We are accessing the wisdom of God. Okay. So I just want to leave uh, leave it at this point. So we carry on um, on Saturday. Okay. Because tomorrow is Good Friday. But I want to just think about this. When you find something that is valuable, like one of the uh, parables in the scriptures, the Bible talks about how a man, you know, found a field that has pearls. You know, then he something valuable. He went and sold all his belongings just to be able to buy that uh, field because of that pearl that it contains. In the same way, when we value the wisdom of God, when we see the result of it in our lives, in our world, in the lives of everyone that has to interact with us, then we can go for it. Okay, we can leave everything else just to acquire it. And I want to just encourage us today because the Bible says that Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. He is our is God's wisdom given to us. And when we receive him, then we are tapping into that godly wisdom. We are tapping into the wisdom of God. All right. So I hope this has been a blessing. Um, like it and share it. Um, click the notification button if you want to know next time when we're on doing a live broadcast. Also, it's going to be on YouTube. You can send the um, link to people to watch. When you watch it, you like it, you um, <laughs> you share it, you subscribe, and you keep the bell. You, uh, click the bell button. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it here and we'll carry on on Saturday. So let me just say a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you because you want us to be wise, not just in the wisdom of the world, but in your higher form of wisdom. And Christ, you have given unto us as wisdom. Lord, we thank you that you are the wisdom of God given unto us. We acknowledge you. We admire you. We, 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 we declare that you are our wisdom. And we are confident in the fact that with us in living our lives in obedience to you, to you, to show that we love you in return, thank you because we begin to manifest that wisdom more and more and more. And Father God, as we do that, thank you because all the benefits that come with that wisdom will be our portion. Father, we just thank you and praise you that from this day forward, there's anyone out there who has not received the Lord Jesus Christ and he's struggling, I want to encourage them that, Lord, you will minister to them, you will touch them, you will touch their hearts, that at any particular point in time, they can turn to you and ask you, Jesus, the wisdom of God, to be their Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, I'll see you next time when we do the live.